Hello and welcome to lesson 1.4. Today in the part 1 video we're going to be looking at integers and tomorrow we are going to look at absolute value in the part 2 video. So far in our math careers uh, we've dealt a lot with what we call positive numbers or numbers that fall above zero. Sometimes, however, you're going to find there's going to be a need to represent numbers that fall below zero. And a prime example of this would be when we're looking at temperatures. Uh, if you look at, um, you know, like kind of what we experienced during the summertime and um, even in the fall, we know that we have a lot of uh, numbers that are in the positives, okay? It gets pretty warm. We know that we're above zero. But as we kind of start uh, trickling into late fall and um, definitely in the wintertime, sometimes we hit temperatures that fall below zero or in what we call the negative range. So if you look at a scale here, you can see right here is zero. And I'll go and I'll draw that right on the thermometer here. And because our table over here is going to be measured in Fahrenheit, the zero degree Fahrenheit actually falls at this line right here. And I can see that because of my label right there. So when I look at my table and I see numbers like a negative 32, that number is going to fall down in this region, kind of right down here. So you can see that that falls below zero. As opposed to water, it freezes at 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and that would be a positive 32 so that's going to fall up in this region here and we can see that that is above zero. Now one thing just to kind of keep in mind if you haven't noticed already notice if it's a positive number or a number above zero we don't have to have a positive symbol out up front here and we don't have to say a positive zero or positive 32 we can just say 32. However, if you want to represent a number that falls below zero, you will see that you have this negative symbol in front, and we would read that as negative 32. So let's take a quick look at an example of how we would use negative numbers. So for example one, it says write an integer for each. So just keep in mind that if you want to write something as a negative number, you have to remember to include the negative. If we are writing it as a positive number. You can either write the positive in front of it or you do not have to write anything. So for part A, it says we are going to lose $7. Well, because losing is going um, in the negative direction or we could potentially fall below zero, we are gonna represent that with a negative $7. Please don't forget to use your uh, label there. Okay, part B says we find $9. Well, if you find $9, that's adding to the amount of money you already have. So we could either just write that as $9, or you could show that with a plus $9. And again, I'm okay with how you write it. I just want you to know that if you see it written like this, that you know that it's automatically positive. Likewise, when we go to part C, it says we're going eight steps forward. The word forward indicates that we are going in the positive direction. So you can write that just as eight. Part D says that we are, um, we have a three yard gain. Three yards gained indicates that we are going in the positive direction as well. So we could write this as a three or even a plus three if you wanted to. And then if we are looking at part E, if we're talking about five floors down, that would be five four floors below us, or we would represent that with a negative five. Now, sometimes it's nice to see a picture to kind of see how things um, are working, whether they're gonna be positive or negative. Um, so if you look at a number line here, uh, notice this negative line or this number line up here at the top. Okay, typically um, you have a zero point. Okay, now zero is a number that is neither positive nor negative. Okay, it does not have a sign. Uh, if you have a positive number on a horizontal number line, okay, 
Positive numbers are always going to fall to the right, and negative numbers are always going to fall to the left of zero. And then as we move from left to right across this number line, numbers are going to be getting bigger and bigger, or they are increasing. If we go from right to left, our numbers are getting smaller, or they are decreasing. So in the case of a number line here, if we wanted to visualize some things, I always try to go and find where is my zero. If we have one, sometimes the number line won't have zero, and that's okay. And let's say we want to graph the number uh, 5. So to graph on a number line, if I come up to my number line and that's a positive 5 because there's no symbol in front of it, we assume it to be positive. Right here is my number 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and drop a dot right there on the number 5. Now if I wanted to go and see what a negative 3 looked like, I'm going to start out at my zero here, and I'm going to go three units to the left, and I'm going to drop my point at negative three. So again, I'm just going to come in here. So here's my zero. You can see that the five falls to the right of zero because that's positive, and the negative three falls to the left of zero because it's a negative. Now a number line is a nice way to help us compare numbers if we're trying to arrange them in order. And we'll look at example two uh, that's going to have us do that here in just one moment. Before we look at example two though, um, I just wanted to kind of review uh, some inequality signs with you guys. If you recall, this right here, this symbol is read is greater than. The one where the mouth is opening to the right is read is less than. And then once we go and we add that little line underneath, okay, the direction of the symbol is going to tell us if it's greater than or less than, but then when we add that line underneath, we also have to include or equal to. Now we can use these symbols here along with the number line to help us compare numbers. So for example two, it says graph zero, two, and negative six on a number line. Once we do that, we're going to compare the numbers, and it does tell us that we're going to be using inequalities, and order them from least to greatest. So let's start out graphing these three numbers right here. So I have zero. I'm going to go and put a dot right on zero. Then it says the number two. Two is a positive number, so I'm going to place my dot on two. And then I have a negative six. Negative six is going to be to the left of zero because it's negative. So I have my point here. Now what this does, and I'm going to write my numbers up here. So this is negative six, zero, and two. So at a very quick glance then, we can see that negative six is the smallest. Then I'm going to go from left to right. So then I see that zero would come next, and then two would come after that. So to write this with inequalities, because this is what it's asked us to do, I would write negative six is less than zero, which is less than two. And then it says to order them from least to greatest. So I could just go negative six, zero, and two. And again, this is all very easy to see once I plot these points on a number line. Please let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day.